Hey everyone, in this lesson we're going to talk about cold sores or herpes. So in this lesson we're going to talk about what causes cold sores, what are some of the other manifestations, what we can do to make the diagnosis, and what we can do to treat it. So cold sores or herpes are chronic clusters of vesicular erosive lesions. Well, what does that mean? Well, as you can see, they are very basically groups of little skin lesions that become little vesicles that can erupt and become erosions. They are due to infection by herpes simplex virus 1 or 2. So we used to learn that maybe one of these viruses causes oral herpes, one of them causes genital herpes, but really they can both cause cold sores or oral herpes. Now the primary infection involving herpes simplex virus 1 or 2 there is a site of inoculation. So if someone comes into contact with someone else that has um, is shedding the virus and there may be a break in the skin, that is the site of inoculation. There can be a sudden onset of multiple painful vesicles on an erythematous base. So you can get this very sudden, very nasty, painful area on the lip or wherever this site of inoculation is, and it can be very red and very uh, sore. And the primary infection generally lasts for about 10 to 14 days. And it may have systemic symptoms. This can include fever or chills, malaise, you just may feel very under the weather with this. Now, the pathophysiology of cold sores and herpes virus in general is that after the resolution of the primary infection, so after that 10 to 14 day period where your body eventually seems to resolve the infection and you're back to your normal self, unfortunately the virus hangs around and it remains dormant within ganglion cell neurons. So they basically stay there and what happens is so that HSV or herpes simplex virus hangs around in ganglion cell neurons and really you're immune system basically keeps them in check and suppresses them and keeps them within the neuron and you're not going to have any symptoms until you have something that causes a recurrent infection. It could be that you're immunosuppressed in some way. You may have um, an illness or infection or sometimes when you get older or some kind of stressor can cause this to erupt and have another recurrent infection of cold sores. And this is is due to a reactivation of the herpes simplex virus from the ganglion cell neurons. And it, it recurs at the primary site of infection. So wherever you had that site of inoculation the first time where you had that eruption of painful vesicles, you're going to have the same recurring, a recurrent infection in the same place. So right in the same site. But What's good news about the recurrent infection, if there is any good news, is that the, sh the duration of the recurrent infection is shorter than the primary infection and generally can last around five days. And a lot of times people will report that they have some prodromal symptoms. And prodromal symptoms really mean you start feeling something before you have an onset of the cold sore. So you may feel that with, you know, with 6 to 53 hours prior to eruption of the vesicles, you have this feeling of burning, tingling, maybe itchiness, pruritus, or pain in that area. So you can just feel something coming on with your with your lip. And so once you have the prodromal symptoms, you're going to have an eruption, and that's your recurrent infection. Even if you don't have that eruption um, continuing, perhaps you've resolved the recurrent infection or resolve the primary infection, you can have what is called subclinical shedding of the virus. So even if you don't feel like you have this infection or this cold sore, you may be shedding the virus and passing it on to others without you even knowing it. So I just wanted to quickly um, mention that here. So there is something we call subclinical shedding of the virus. Now, I want to also talk about other manifestations of herpes. We can get what we call a herpetic whitlow and basically this is an infection of a herpes simplex virus on a finger so perhaps you've maybe had it on your on a lip or had a cold sore and you maybe had a break in the skin 
or something else that leads to an inoculation of a finger, you're going to get these painful vesicles on your finger. And that's actually just a herpes virus infecting the finger, causing what we call herpetic whitlow. Again, it's inoculation. Again, this will resolve, and again, it will often recur because, again, that virus hangs around in your neurons. So another manifestation of cold sores or herpes can be herpes gladiatorum. So herpes gladiatorum is basically an inf herpes infection of the face, the neck, or the arms. So again, same thing as before. There's a, an inoculation of a certain site, not a lip, not a finger, but a face, neck, or arm. And again, you get vesicles on an erythematous base, just like we said before with um, oral herpes. And in this case, this herpes gladiatorum is caused or um, occurs in wrestlers and rugby players. So um, herpes gladiatorum gladiators. So you can think of gladiators, people that are have physical contact with each other. So one person might have an eruption of herpes and they're in physical contact with someone else. They can actually pass it on to another individual in a different location. Perhaps they struck them in the face um, or they had a very close contact with um, someone with herpes up against um, an area of the face or neck or arm and that can lead to this what we call herpes gladiatorum. And again, this is all due to skin-to-skin -to -skin contact. So people in physical um, sports like wrestling, rugby, can all get this um, condition. And the last manifestation I want to just discuss quickly is erythema multiforme. Erythema multiforme is basically an acute immune system disorder that may be elicited during infection with herpes simplex virus. So if you, you know, are infected um, on your lip, you might get these odd kind of uh, skin manifestations or mucosal manifestations on certain parts of your body. Some some of these can um, c cause these manifestations on your hands, in your oral mucosa, or even your genitals. So you may get this odd cutaneous manifestation here, like in this picture, and that's actually erythema multiforme. So how do we make the diagnosis of cold sores or herpes infection? Well, we can do a viral culture or PCR. We can see um, evidence of the herpes simplex virus. But in actuality, almost always, there's probably going to be a clinical diagnosis. So what can we do to, to treat this condition? Well, we can use acyclovir. So acyclovir is an antiviral that's been shown to help reduce the either onset if you use it prophylactically, or we can reduce the duration of symptoms. And the other related antiviral is valacyclovir. So either of these can be used to actually reduce the onset or eruption of, of uh, herpes or reduce the duration of symptoms. So both of these are great treatments for this condition. So if you want to learn more about other dermatological conditions, please check out my dermatology playlist. Uh, if you haven't already, uh, please consider liking and subscribing, also clicking the notification bell if you like this lesson and you want more lessons like it. So thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.